of Jesus Christ. Uh, my name is Apostle Isaac Nana, coming to you from Fountain Gateway Church in Portland, Oregon. We are so excited to come to you through this uh, platform where we can bring the Word of God to you. We know that we are living in very interesting times. I know that uh, the coronavirus uh, has you know, changed a lot of uh, ways of doing things. But we want to thank God that uh, even through these ways that are coming to us, God is helping us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. The title of my message today is Growing in the Dark Room. Growing in the Dark Room. I am sure many of us who have been around for quite some time, we remember how photography has worked for many years. When I was growing up, the photographer used to come and he would take pictures when there was an occasion. And then we would wait until the film kind of got filled up and then the photographer would go to the studio. And in the studio, they used to have what is called a dark room. That is where the film was exposed to some light and the way the system works is that you know, in that dark room, and it had to be very dark, that is where, you know, the object that was captured in the film would be exposed to some light, to some negative light, and so that, and so that a positive image that is called now the picture may come out. So in the dark room, the people there used to work with the negative and the positive so that something can be seen in form of a photograph. And even today, dark rooms are still used, although not uh, as much as they, uh, you know, they used them back then. They are used in schools and you know, colleges. And so this dark room in the world of photography was a very important room because you could not be able to see the beauty of what had been captured by the photographer without this dark room. I see this dark room representing the dark period in the life of a believer or in the life of the church. It represents the times when things look dark. It represents the time when things are difficult. And I do not know any darker moment than the one that we are having right now with this COVID-19, when there are lockdowns, when things have kind of grounded to a halt, when things look gloomy, when there is no hope, when businesses have stopped, when money is running out of accounts, when children are locked up at home, when parents do not know what to do with the children, when churches seem to be kind of closed down in terms of buildings. This is a dark room. We are in a dark room, but I have good news for you. Something good is coming out of the dark room because there shall be growth in the dark room. Those of you that know the history of the church, it appears like the church seemed to have thrived more during the dark and difficult times. Earlier in the week, I was so encouraged by a cartoon that I saw. And in the cartoon, it shows, you know, the devil and it shows Jesus. So the devil in the cartoon says, I just succeeded to close the doors of every church. That is what the devil said. And you know, maybe that's what the enemy thinks now that churches are not meeting in person in buildings. Although we know that those are just buildings, the church is actually alive and well. We are the church. Wherever we go, we are the church. But the devil sometimes, you know, he's stupid and he doesn't know everything. And so he thinks he might have closed down the church. And so in the cartoon he says, I just succeeded to close down all churches. But in the same cartoon, Jesus is on the other side. And guess what he says? He says, I just succeeded to start new churches in every home. That is powerful. While the church buildings are locked up, 
Churches are beginning in every home. There are altars in every home. People are praying. People are reading the word of God. Parents and children. Yes, people are listening to the word of God. And so while the devil thinks that in this dark room he has closed down the church, guess what? In the same dark room Jesus says, I just succeeded to open new churches in every home. So I believe with all my heart that the people of God, they do better and they shine brighter in the dark rooms of life. I want us to look at what the Bible says in the book of Psalm 139, and we are going to read verse 7 to 12. Psalm 139, verse 7 to 12. Here is what the Bible says in Psalm 139, 7 to 12. This is David who is saying, he's saying, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me. Even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. Verse 11, if I say surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Verse 12, indeed the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. This is David who is speaking. He recognizes the power of God in every situation. He recognizes the omnipresence of God in every situation. You know very well that our God is omnipotent. Our God is omniscient. Our God is omnipresent. That means our God is all-powerful. Our God is all-knowing. And our God is everywhere at the same time. And so David says here, Where can I go from your presence? You are everywhere. You are everywhere. He says, even if I make my bed in hell, you are still going to be there. Your presence is going to be there. Your power is still going to be there. He says, even if I take the wings of the morning and dwell to the uttermost part of the sea, your presence will still be there. And he even says in verse 11, even if I get into a dark situation where there is darkness all around me, and he says, even where the night is so dark, he says, your presence will still be light unto me. And I love what he says in verse 12, because he says, indeed, the darkness shall not hide you. There is no way that darkness can hinder you from walking. And he says, because the darkness and light are the same when it comes to you. God's power is not hindered in darkness. When you walk into a dark room, like the way the photographers used to take their films in the dark room, when you walk into a dark room, and maybe I'm preaching to somebody who has walked into a dark room financially, you have walked into a dark room, maybe domestically, maybe you know, economically, or maybe spiritually, or maybe health-wise, maybe some of you, you know, we are talking about COVID-19, and maybe you are already sick from the coronavirus. You have walked into a dark room. It does not matter how dark your room is. Listen, the Bible says that darkness and light are the same to God. God is not hindered by your dark situation. And I believe that there shall be growth, there shall be blessing, there shall be miracles in every dark room where God's people have walked into. I want to share with you three things that I believe God in his wisdom, he has kept in every dark room. 
in your dark room today, there are, I believe, at least three things that will be found in that dark room. And because of the presence of these three things, and I believe there are more things, but I'm just going to share with you three things that the wisdom of God places in every dark room. Because of these three things, I believe with every fiber of my being that you will experience growth in your dark room. The first thing I believe God places what is called fertilizer in a dark room. Fertilizer in a dark room. Yes, the heavenly fertilizer. And this, we are going to look at an example in the book of Exodus chapter 1, verse 8 to 12. Exodus chapter 1, we know the story of how the children of Israel were in Egypt and they were in bondage. And here's what the Bible says in Exodus uh, chapter 1, and verse 8 to 12. It says, Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply. And it happened in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us and so go out of the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh supply cities, pythons, and Ramses. But here's what the Bible says in verse 12. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were in dread of the children of Israel. Listen to verse 12 again. The Bible says, The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were in dread of the children of Israel. The Bible says, The way the children of Israel ended up in Egypt was through Joseph, who became the prime minister. And we know that when they came, his family, when you know, it came, there were only, you know, very few people. But the Bible says they were given the best land, and as long as Joseph was alive, they were treated well. And you know, they continued to multiply. They continued to increase. And even the prime ministers, and maybe the pharaohs that came after that, they continued the trend of treating the Israelites well, and they multiplied. But you see, seasons do change. Times do change. And the Bible says a time came when a new pharaoh, a new king arose who did not know Joseph. And so instead of treating the children of Israel well, he came up with an idea of oppressing them, pushing them into a dark room of life. Seasons can change. Many of you are listening today and seasons have changed. Maybe some of you have been laid off from your places of work. Some of you probably the favors that you have received are no longer there. I do not know what has changed, but I know when seasons change, things change. Sometimes money goes away. Sometimes favors go away. Things that were helping us to continue in life, sometimes they are taken away. The Bible says a new king arose that did not know Joseph. Maybe in your life you are saying, it appears like there is a new king that has, you know, has, has you know, a, you know, arisen in my situation. That is why things have changed. That's why things are becoming harder. The Bible says they were pushed into slavery. The Bible says they oppressed them. The Bible says they said, let us make them work hard. Let them, you know, let us make sure that they don't enjoy life. But here is what the Bible says. When they were pushed into that dark room, God had put his fertilizer in the dark room. Because the Bible says, the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Yes, there is heavenly fertilizer that makes us to multiply even during hard times. It makes us to grow even during difficult times. 
I want to declare to you, child of God, in your dark room, maybe coronavirus and its effects has put you in your dark room, prepare yourself because in that dark room there is heavenly fertilizer. The more you get afflicted, the more you will multiply. Yes. The more the enemy tries to attack you, mm. the more stress tries to attack you, mm. the more financial troubles try to attack you, mm. the more they oppress you, the more you will multiply. Amen. I want to declare this, that in Jesus' name, mm. the church of Jesus Christ is not becoming weaker. Amen. The church of Jesus Christ is not becoming confused yes. just because we have walked into a dark room. The Bible says the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied. Hallelujah. I want to declare multiplication to you in the name yes. of Jesus. Yes. I want to declare growth to you in your dark yes. rooms yes. in the name of Jesus. May you begin to grow and multiply yes. in a way that you cannot explain. Yes. May things that have stalled in your life, uh, may things that have dwarfed in your life, yes. may they begin to grow and multiply yes. in your dark room. Why? Because in every dark room, God has his heavenly fertilizer that makes his people to thrive and grow and multiply, even in difficult times. Number two, there is power of recovery in every dark room. Just like the way there was the, you know, the picture or the image that was captured by the photographer. And for some reason... Or oh, for some time, whatever was captured was not seen. It is seemed to have been lost. It is seemed to have been wasted. Nobody could even remember it. But when this photographer walked with this film in the dark room, there is a process of developing and recovering what had been captured. What seemed to have been concealed, what seemed to have been lost. I don't know what things you think you have lost during this time of COVID-19 situation. I don't know how many things you say, I had captured this, but now it seems, you know, concealed. It seems lost. I have gained this, but now it is lost. Is it a business that has closed? Is it a ministry that has closed? Is it a job that has disappeared? Is it a strength that has disappeared? I don't know what your camera had captured. And now it appears like it cannot be seen. And now you have walked into a dark room. Prepare yourself because in the dark room there is power of recovery. You will re recover and recapture the image that you had before. Mm -hmm. You will recapture your vision. Mm -hmm. You will recapture your dream. Mm -hmm. Nothing is lost in the dark room. Because there is power of recovery. The Bible tells us the story of Samson. From the book of Judges, chapter 16. The story of Samson. And we don't have time to read the whole of it. But listen to what the Bible says in Judges, chapter 16. I'm going to read verse 19 to 22. And then read verse 25 and 28. Here's what the Bible says. Judges 16, verse 19 to 22. Then she lured him to sleep on her knees and called for a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his hair. Then she began to torment him and his strength left him. And she said, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. The Bible says this. Then the Philistines took him, put out his eyes, and brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze fetters, and he became a grinder in the prison. But listen to verse 22. However, the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaven. Samson was a great man of God. God had used him to deliver Israel from the hands of the oppressors. But we know very well that through a wicked woman, he was brought down. And the Bible says that 
she lured him to sleep and because of that they were able to come and cut his hair and you know very well that hair is what uh, was used to connect you know Samson and his Nazirite power and so he lost his power he lost his strength that we know and the Bible says they actually took his eyes out and he became a grinder in prison. He was put in prison. In those days, the criminals were put in what is, I mean, in what was called the inner dark room. You can imagine Samson was there and his hair was out. And scripture says his eyes were out. He was in the dark room. But verse 22, in the dark room things happen. There is power of recovery. The Bible says his hair began to grow again. I don't know who feels like your hair has been cut off by COVID-19. But I want to declare to you in your dark room, your hair will grow again. And the Bible tells us that when the hair grew again, they did not know that in darkness there was recovery. The Philistines did not know that in darkness the hair was growing. Until we know that when they say, if you continue reading, they say, bring out Samson that he may, he may perform for us. When they were merry, when they were drunk, and he told the boy that was leading him because he could not see, to lead him to the pillars. And we know he prayed a prayer. He said, God, I'm in a dark room, but I know in the dark room, you have availed for me the power of recovery. I can recover my vision although my eyes are gone. He said, give me strength that I may bring judgment on the Philistines. The Bible says that day he killed more than he had killed all his life. I declare that in your dark room, there is power of recovery. Your hair is growing again. In fact, I expect some people that are in lockdown because maybe they were so busy, they were not seeking God and other things. Now when they come out, Watch the anointing. Watch the ministry. Watch the power. Some gifts have resurrected. Some ministries have been pre-sharpened. Yes, hallelujah. The hair is growing again. Number three is that in every dark room there are treasures. In every dark room there are treasures. The wisdom of God places treasures in a dark room. Here's what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 to 3. That says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held to subdue nations before him and to lose the armor of kings, to open before him the double doors so that the gates will not be shut. Verse 2, this is what God says to King Cyrus in Isaiah chapter 45. Verse 2, I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. Verse 3, I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, who called you out by your name, I am the God of Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, there are treasures in darkness. The wisdom of God places very important things in every dark room. Are you in a dark room today and you are saying it appears like there is nothing in here? Well, look for the fertilizer that is going to help you to multiply and grow in your dark room. Look for the power of recovery. Let your hair grow. Come out of that dark room more energized and more powerful. And yes, find treasures. Find the treasures. What are the treasures? I believe in this time, God is revealing himself in a very, very strong way to people in time of prayer. People are able to read now. They're able to read God's word. They're able to focus on their lives. Some people are downloading ideas and revelations from heaven. I tell you what, many businesses will begin out of the lockdown. You know why? Because business ideas are coming. 
treasures are in the dark room. Do not allow the dark room experience to leave you empty handed. If the devil thought that he is pushing you in a dark room so that you may become weak and confused, let him be surprised. Because you are walking out of your dark room with new ideas. Even churches, don't make a mistake of thinking that churches will operate the same way. No, we are coming out with more tools, like especially these social platforms. We are now coming out with more ideas and more strategies. Why? Because there are treasures in darkness. God says, I'll give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches in secret places that you may know that I am the Lord. Let me break down the word grow because we are talking about growing in the dark room. Let us use this word grow as an acronym. The letter G stands for gain wisdom. Gain wisdom. In your lockdown, in your quarantine, in your time where it appears like you, in your, you are in a dark room, gain wisdom. May God give you wisdom. May you reflect on issues. May you relook at issues. May you allow God to fill you with the spirit of wisdom that you may proceed out of your dark room wiser and more knowledgeable. Gain wisdom. Yes, grow. Gain wisdom. The letter R stands for reset. You know very well that sometimes when your phone or your electronic gadget becomes plugged up and it cannot take, you know, any more data, what do you do? Go to factory reset. You reboot. And once you go to reset, guess what? It regains its original power. It's time for us to reset. In your dark room, do not just gain wisdom, but reset. Let the Holy Ghost press the reset button of your life. Begin afresh. Let God renew your strength. Reset in your life. Reset in your vision and in the way you do things. The letter O. Open yourself up. Open yourself up. Some of us have been closed up in many areas of our lives because we have not had time to surrender ourselves to God. But in this time of lockdown in your dark room, open yourself up. Open yourself up for revelation, for new directions, for ideas. Do like John the Revelator when they took him and they banished him in the island of Patmos. Yes, where he was banished and he was in the dark room. Guess what? That's where he gained revelation. That is where he wrote the book of Revelation. He saw things that were, you know, uh, in the future. Why? Because he opened himself up for revelation. That is how we grow in dark rooms. And that is how we gain the treasures of God. And the last letter is W. In that word, grow. W stands for wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. In your dark room, after you have done all that you know you're supposed to do, wait on the Lord. The Bible says those that wait upon the Lord, they shall not be ashamed. And the Bible says that those who wait upon the Lord in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31, they shall renew their strength. They will not be defeated in the dark room. You might be in the dark room, you are waiting upon the Lord, things are not moving. Guess what? Those who wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. I declare you are coming out of your dark room with the strength of mounting up with wings like eagles, walking and not uh, you know, getting weary, running and not fainting, walking and not fainting. God is going to enable you to do things that you are not able to do before. You know why? You have waited upon the Lord. So my brother and my sister and every person that is watching, why don't we decide to grow in the dark room? Grow, gain wisdom, reset, open yourself up for God to speak to you and wait upon the Lord. Do not forget that in every dark room, it does not matter what the devil is trying to do. There are three things, at least three things that God has placed there in his wisdom. 
There is fertilizer to help you to multiply and grow in your dark room. There is the power of recovery and recovering everything that you have captured before in the name of Jesus. Yes, and number three, there are treasures. There are ideas. There are things that you are going to gain in your dark room. As you walk out of your dark room, you are walking out better, stronger, wiser, and more energized. The more they try to oppress you, the more you will multiply in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray together right now in the name of the Lord? Wherever you are, just take some time to pray. Just take some time to thank God for this word as we go to him in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory, we exalt your holy name. Father, we know that there are people that are listening to this word and they are right now in their dark rooms. And some rooms are real dark. They are not able to see what tomorrow holds. But I thank you that in every dark room you want us to grow. And Father God, right now I pray that in Jesus' name in every dark room the Lord, your people will find the fertilizer, heavenly fertilizer that will make them multiply and grow in the name of Jesus. They will find that power, the anointing of recovery. They will recapture, they will recover everything that they have captured before. Nothing is lost in the name of Jesus. And I pray that in Jesus' name that for every child of God there shall be treasures that will be found. Thank you for the great testimonies that are coming out of the lives of those that are walking out of the dark room. We give you praise for fresh ideas. We thank you for strategies. We thank you for treasures, business ideas, ministry ideas, things that we would not have captured had we not walked into the dark room. I give you glory and I give you honor. I declare you anointing upon every person that is listening today. And we give you praise because you are doing things that only you can by your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and believe. Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. Are you there and you have never given your life to Jesus? You are locked down. I want you to know you can be locked down, but you should not be locked out of God's presence. Yes. And if you would like to give your life to Jesus, just say this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I open myself, I open my heart to you. Come into my dark room and give me life. Forgive my sins. I give myself to you and I thank you that from today I am born again and I am the child of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.